Hey everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your archer, and today we're going to get together and I'm going to show you how you can create this fabulous storm scene. Now, I really like the storm scene because it's not just a wonderful stormy day and there's not this, this great roof, but there's also a little bit of light and optimism. Every technique here, especially the clouds, we're going to really focus on and help you create those for yourself at home. This is part of a 30 day painting program. So you can do all 30 in the series or you can do just this one to help me make sure that you can see everything that you need to see to be able to paint this yourself is my husband, John. Hey guys. You'll be hearing him on the mic during the video and we're gonna, he's gonna be making sure that we're zoomed in where we need to be zoomed in, that you're not missing any mixing, that you're not missing any techniques. So all you've gotta do is get your paint, get your brushes and come back and meet me at these right now. We're gonna paint this. Today's colors are Naples Yellow Light, Cad Yellow Medium, Cad Red Medium, Phthalo Green, Phthalo Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Sienna, Mars Black, and Titanium White. Now we're gonna start out with our eight by eight surface and we're going to paint it a mixture of our ultramarine and burnt sienna. I'm gonna take my artist knife and I'm gonna mix a gray using these two colors. Now I may have to put out some more blue when I'm all done, but these two make a very, very nice gray. I like very much and is going to give us a great basis for our stormy sky. So I'm gonna take a big brush, big brush, and paint my whole canvas and the sides this color and then dry it. Once your surface is painted entirely this gray color and it's dry and not warm, you don't want this to be warm for the chalk part, I'm gonna take a tool called a T-square and I'm gonna take this Drift chalk tool and I'm gonna mark every inch across my canvas. I'm gonna make a little chalk mark every inch and then using my T-square, I will make vertical and horizontal lines, creating a one by one inch grid on my eight by eight surface. Then across the top, I will number from left to right, one through eight. And then on the left side, coming down the side, I will number one to eight from top to bottom. And that's gonna really help me use my reference uh, and get my image duplicated on my surface very easily. So how your gridded surface works is you draw only what you see in a square. Now in this particular uh, painting, I am going to draw some of my cloud lines so that when I come back with my brush, I have a sense, a general sense of the shape that they are. So like when I'm coming in the two inch square and I know that the cloud is going to exit here, I'll just take that line there. You do this for all the contour lines of your major objects until those are sketched in. Once you have the major objects sketched into your surface, we're gonna go ahead and call that step one, John. Yep. Step one. Now when I do my sky, I am gonna put a little bit of my ultramarine blue back to mix into it. I've got several combos of gray and kind of aquas in the stormy sky and i am going to want to put in like a little keyhole of light where there's this really optimistic kind of light coming through now to start that though because i've got to bring these dark clouds down over it i'm going to go ahead and get a number eight cambridge bright this is a mix of hog and synthetic bristles um just anything that's going to give you that nice effect and I'm gonna go ahead and put a smidge of my blue into my brush. I may tone it as you can see and see how kind of dry and chill it is. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tone it with my brown because I don't want anything to be truly bright per se, because this is a stormy day. So while I'm going to have, and I'm gonna bring my paint down below my tree line, that reason being so I can do some little delicate leaves and things mm -hmm. that could be going on. Come up over my little 
house-like structure. Always fun to do. And paint into this tree a bit too so I can do some delicate little leaf work. Mm -hmm. And even though I'm going to be pulling this dark value down from the clouds, it can be really nice to get that in there now. And just a small toning of the blue can keep it from being too saturated. So it doesn't take a huge amount. I'm going to go ahead and paint that around the side. And exaggerate how light things are, perhaps around the house. I'll have to put that roof line back. I trimmed my roof. Because, mm. again, I want a very light color. Now, here in the center, I've got my blue. I'm going to go ahead and grab a little of my Naples yellow light. And it kind of adds a green to it. I'm going to go ahead and begin to peek, peek about what will be the keyhole of light. There's lots and lots of layers that will be going on. But this is ni a nice base color to be starting with. Because this is a weird day, like there's a storm roaming in. And we want to make sure that we've got that kind of going on there. Now up here, I'm going to grab a lot of my blue and a smidge of my brown. So this is my ultramarine blue and my brown. Put some white into it to sort of reveal it. And it can be lighter than the stuff around it, but you do want it to be very stormy in its colors. Wiggle your Cambridge brush or whatever you're doing. I'm, I'm working the corner of my brush. To kind of push in my little cloud effects. Painting around the corners like you do. Maybe right here into the cloud, lighten it a bit. Mm -hmm. Kind of, again, atm atmosphere, stormy day. Okay, that's what we're talking about here is this really spectacular stormy day. Another thing that I can do, I'm going to take this slightly darker color, and then right here, kind of on the outside edge of this guy, I'm going to add a little bit of that darkness, and you can see me brushing it in here as well. Not too far. I still want to keep the house very focal into that optimistic one of light. So darkening these on the outside and then creating this sort of light trajectory that's going to be coming through there. Mm -hmm. Going to be fantastic. Now, let's call this step two. So you kind of got a sense of where you're at here. This is where you're going to be going. Come back for step three, and we're going to paint some more really fun clouds. So I think it's important as we go forward, if you're wondering what I'm thinking here, I think I always think it's very important what we put on our wall, uh, the things that we paint, the things that we lean into. And I feel like as we're doing this, the adding the light, adding these bright pops creates a sense of optimism, even in a storm. So while we might be very inclined, I'm going to take a little bit of blue over to my black and it makes kind of a blue gray as, as it were. A little water in there and a bit of white. It's quite dark, yeah? Mm -hmm. Going to kind of speak to this underneath area. We'll be back again a bunch, but kind of nice to start to lay in. And I've got some turquoise and stuff. Anyways, I really like to, John, have that like sense of, for the most part, hopefulness in what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring this up here into this shape. And we can see already that kind of builds a bank, doesn't it? Talks mm -hmm. about that bank. Now I'm going to get a lot more white into the mix. Just enough water to... Maybe a little more gray because I want more neutral. I, I do want a slight blue cast to it, but I don't want it to be something that overwhelms the painting. 
I'm kind of coming here along this little line, if you can see that. Pushing in my brush, working it from the side. Now, as I'm going, I will get into my darker color. I'm gonna push that into my cloud space. And you can see how the pre-drawing that was very, very helpful. Wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Because if you've ever had trouble seeing the shapes of clouds, sometimes sketching in their contours will get you through a lot. I'm going to wipe this out again and get a lot more white into it. And just make sure, again, on the corner, light pressure that I kind of highlight that space. Sometimes I have to get like a drop or two because it's a dry brush, but it's not the driest brush I use. I'm wanting to make sure that I've got a nice light edge as I'm working for it. So you can see me coming back with a little bit of dark and blending that in. A nice touch that we're going to do for this run of clouds, and you're going to like it quite a lot. I'm going to take my number four. I'm going to get the gray color into it that we like so much. And I'm going to get a lot of white onto that to make a light color even lighter than the initial cloud. And you're going to come here. Making... And have a little haloed edge. You see your little haloed edge? Mm -hmm. It's a nice little touch. I think a lot of you are going to really love this sky. You're going to be really surprised at how well it comes out once it's all together. I'm just wiggling that brush. You can see I'm just trying to. Make sure that that lighter value is really defined on that edge. Now that actually was quite a lot. So take a look at how that was done because we're going to be doing this more and more as we come down. Let's call that step three and I'm going to take us to step four where I'm going to show you more. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue to play with the values, the shadows and lights of the clouds. And we're going to be doing that a lot with our blue and black. I do want to come into one area with quite a dark kind of color. So I'm going to come in and really exaggerate what will be the shadow like along here. Get some more white on there. You do want it darker than the cloud that it's against. So that can be, I went more blue this time to get it. If you can see that. This one is deeper and it's going to help define the cloud shape. Bring some of that up into here even. It's always fun to just be like, my clouds have lights and dark, stormy days. So we see that kind of coming together. Now that, you know, you've got the dark value, keeping it gray, you'll want to come in with a lighter value than what it's next to. See how we're doing? Yeah. 
and reveal another banking of clouds. You can see on the corner of my brush and that sort of wiggling, randomizing motion. It's happening there. Let's take it around that edge. You know, and we look at that and go, do we like that? Do we feel like that's nice? If you want to come back, I like to wipe out sometimes and come back with like a very dark value. My black and my... And I've exaggerated some of these pockets. A stormy day. Thinking about how those storm clouds are happening. Looking pretty good. I like it. I'm going to come forward with like another one here. I'm going to get a little into my burnt sienna, but a lot of my ultramarine blue. All right, so that's kind of a different gray, but still a gray. Creates a different hue, but not really that much of a different value unless I put a lot of light into it. I love working the corner of a brush. You know, always stop and kind of evaluate how your banks are going. Are they, are they identifiable for what they are? Bring some bit of this this way. I can even start to come here and get closer to my light that I've got going. We're working it. Stormy day clouds. Yeah. Because, you know, stormy days happen. How these are happening, if you're ever wondering how clouds are, you know, kind of formed and shaped when we're painting them, it's really about having shadows versus highlights versus shadows versus highlights. And those things become very, very important pretty quickly. I'm going to grab a little of my blue and black again, which creates a fairly dark aspect. And we'll start to make sure that that little area, and get a little more blue into it. Starting to see the pull up of this. That was more blue, as you can see. We have a lot to do there, but this is a nice layer too. And hopefully what you're seeing is some of these little banks. Making shape in some kind of way. I'm a little white there. And then we blend out that little bank. And we'll scumble this all in a little bit. Let's call that four because that was a lot to do. Really try to look at these random shapes and how they're shaded, how we've softened them or created hard edges. We're going to come back in five and do some little edge work on these different banks and some shading. So they really stand out from each other a little bit. So I'll see you back for that on step five.
So here in step five, I'm going to want to find little areas of the clouds and kind of highlight them and exaggerate them some. So first, I'm going to grab just some white and I'll go ahead and tone it with a little bit of our blue. I've thinned it with water. I'm on the edge of my number four and I'm going to come here and even exaggerate again. On the, some of the edges of the cloud, I've already exaggerated, yes? Yeah, that looks really good. I like how that makes the uh, clouds have a silver lining. Well, they need to, don't they? They need to have a silver lining. Now, on the clouds that are in the blue-gray mixture, I do want to have kind of a lining, so I've got to find a value a little lighter than what I painted them. There you go, see? If I want to soften that out, I pull the paint out of my brush and look, I just kind of take it on its edge again, mm. softening that line into the cloud. Wow. <laughs> Building out that bank. The bank wanted me to believe in it anyways. I'm just giving it what it's asking for. <laughs> oh, there it is. You know, maybe there's a little bit of a hidden fellow right there. I find when I'm doing this, I can find lots of little clouds hidden in other little clouds. Now I'm going to get into my ultramarine blue and white. And again, I need a lighter color than I'm using. So I can do a similar effect right here. How nice is that? Don't you just love it? And you're like, wait, I didn't know I love clouds. Mm. Hopefully you're feeling like I love clouds now. You can see me coming forward. And I just find little elements within the cloud to kind of exaggerate and define. Sometimes I need to get more water and more paint because that's just where I'm at. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wiggling that little brush around. And a second little run there. Now I'm going to wipe it out. I haven't rinsed it though and I'll just soften any of this pigment that's still sort of wet. Kind of use that little dry brushing. I'm not erasing my edge. I'm just diffusing some of that line. Do you love your little cloud base? Yeah, that's turning out really good. Just make me super happy. Super happy. I'll take a little bit of my blue, black with a lot more blue. And sometimes it's hard to get just enough white, you know? Mm -hmm. You just want to find that lighter, lighter than what you've got color, but not so light as to overdo it. There we go. Oh, 
How's that? What? I know. Super delightful and lovely. Mm -hmm. Let's put one more little bank in over here. We need to put in some lighter little banks. Lighter banky blank clouds. I'm going to grab a little of more of my white and my blue. I still want it to be stormy, so maybe I'll get some burnt sienna into it. So sometimes I'll touch to go, is this light enough for the bank I'm trying to mm. kind of talk about here? I've got a little bit of a puffer coming forward. So I just tap the brush. I just use the brush to sort of stamp out cloud shapes. Yeah. Got to stamp out those cloud shapes. That looks good. Kind of going right into our little keyhole. Now coming along under here, I'm going to take a little bit of my phthalo blue and phthalo green, and it makes kind of this crazy turquoise. And I'm going to come under my sky. Maybe even a little more green than that. Oh, there we go. The green is what kind of gives it a storming cast. If you ever look outside, the, the sky has a bit of a green value, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We're starting to pull that up into this. That green part of the storm. It's subtle, but it matters. There we go. Kind of an interesting thing. I will speaking speaking to that. You can even go the ultramarine. Another shocking combo of the clouds. And you'll see that I'm kind of coming down below. This and it creates a bit of a almost a halo underneath that cloud, an atmospheric little something wonderful. And I'm not breaking up the step only because I want this part to be wet when I start to do the next part. I'm going to get some of my Naples yellow light. begin to define some of these little cloud values a bit. They're fun, right? A little white if you need it. Little turquoise. Let's maybe sweep some of this up here as well. I love playing with the sweeping versus the kind of cumulus formation. Mm. Maybe a little bit of stronger blue right there. Again, we're just playing with the clouds and how we're choosing to sort of see them around here. Just creating this. And you're always sort of playing with, I feel, the highlights and the shadows, the highlights and the shadows. Now, I think this is a good place because that was a lot to take on, mm -hmm. right? You did a lot, including the little glow under here, and we haven't even gotten into any of the extra drama. So let's call that five. That and sounds good. Is that five? I think that's five. I think so. And we'll come back and show you some more tricks for step six. <laughs> so 
So now that we've got that in, we're going to add a little more drama into some of this space around the clouds. I'm going to take this brush again for just a minute and I'm going to get my ultramarine and my phthalo green and a little of my pad yellow, but not too much. It's kind of a balancing act. It makes a pretty nice green gold. You got to get a nice uh, light enough value for this to work. There we go. Kind of a little bit yellowed up if you can see that. <coughs> Playing up some of those sets. I'll rinse it out. I like that. I think that's a a bit of a dramatic puffy set. <laughs> Go ahead and uh, make sure you don't have any um, drips coming down. I'm gonna take a little of my cad yellow and some of my cad red, mostly my cad yellow. And then I find that I can tone it almost with my Naples yellow. Mm. So it'll start to work in here. We're going to begin to put that little light in there. I'm going to get more, get some skinning going on here. I'm going to get some more white. For this. I'm going to come in, add that to these outer edges. Just almost like a calligraphy stroke, right? Where we kind of come in there and highlight some of this where it might be seeing some highlights. Trying to speak to this keyhole in the sky, which is an interesting little space. And I may want to bring it in. And that's something I kind of have to play with is like how big there we go, because it should be like a peak. Yeah. We want the peak of the sky when I'm coming out. I'm going to get some of this yellow and green and white kind of into my mix, because I want to make some of those little determined worked out little cloud forms right here. Pulling those a little bit forward. And then we'll do again what we did before, which is to wipe out and sort of soften that light before that line dries. And can you see how that softens it down? Mm -hmm. Creates a bit of a, ooh, what's happening there? I'm going to go ahead and get some white onto my brush a little bit. And make sure that I've diminished that. In fact, if your paint is skinning, mine is skinning terribly. Sometimes I find the best thing to do is just put out a little bit of fresh. So you're not fighting it, if that makes sense. You don't want to be fighting, you know, everything you've got going on. I'm going to take a little yellow and a little bit of white, and you can see that's just much more buttery. And I'm just doing that same wiggle in here. And I did everywhere else to kind of talk about that cloud shape. And you can be playful right here. It will serve you well. I like that very much. Now, 
here on the bottom, we have a very mellow job. We're going to take our brown and our black. <laughs> a lot of our black. And we're going to start with that very dark color. Kind of up to that line. Maybe even up into what will be our bushes a bit, mm. if that makes sense. Because we're going to be speaking to, I don't know, that sort of like flat. I find that if I make an orange and I get it into my brown, it just creates some neat colors. You can always. Right there, you can see where I took that and. We'll just give some highlights to the earth. The other brush wiggles out and gives some highlights. Feel free to go green and brown. Because these are dark, earthy colors. See the green and brown there? Yeah. Okay. Okay to get into that. That is pretty awesome. Now, coming back for step seven, I want to add this sort of little background bush line and the house. So, are you ready for that? Yeah. Okay. Come back in seven. I'm going to show you the house and a little bit of the background bush line. So, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my number four and I'm going to make some smaller leaves on my background bush line. I'm going to take my Burnt umber and burnt sienna in my phthalo green, maybe even a little bit of my ultramarine. I make a very dark little leaf, and I'm going to come up and just these are just little taps. I'm not trying to paint every leaf, I'm just before I get my big scruffy brush into it, I want to make sure there are some delicate edges here that maybe allow a little bit of the sky to show. Because if it's light, wouldn't some of it show through? Mm -hmm. Definitely made me want to think about that. And I'll take that just a few places. I'm trying to be too delicate. I just want to a little bit. There'll be lots of scruffy little brush movements. might just let some of that feel a little more delicate. Now for this back one, because it comes behind the house, I can actually finish that out. I'll go ahead and use my number eight Cambridge to do it. I'll get that dark mix again, one I really, really like. Let me come back here and do it. Bushes. And I'm going to go up and down. Kind of in my little brush. And it's going to make a little run of bush. You can see that. You can blend that into the. But there's a little bit of those few leaves that sort of stick up and say, we're uh, more interesting bushes. <laughs> and I can even begin to work this run of them in. Neutralize it out and create the distance. I'm going to move to my number six bright, and that's just because it's going to give me some nice kind of sharp edges. And I'm going to take my cad red 
I'm going to actually say my ultramarine because it really grays it a lot. You can see that. And I'm going to come here and work in just a hint of that roof line. Maybe that little roof line coming down. You can see that that it's red, but it's not. Only some of it is going to be like a bright red. So it's important to make sure that while it reads as red distinctly to you, it doesn't read as. Let me take a little brown and black and yellow, and that's actually the basis of the house. Let's look at that. See, it's kind of like a deep stucco. Mm -hmm. But paint this in. I'm going to come inside. I need it darker or grayer than that is what I'm saying. Start with. And then underneath the roof line. And again, it's just it's just one. For the next part, I definitely would like it to be much darker. Because it would be darker in the front of the house. Right? It's under the eaves, it's And while I'm here, on the corner of my brush, I can start thinking about, I'm leaving kind of a little pathway. Mm -hmm. A little path implied. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just you got to give this the person who lives here a way to go home. And it's a good time to make sure that our bushes right up to the house. You can always put that line back, which I think I'm going to have to. And that's why I love this brush. You do see me wipe it out quite a lot. But the reason I love it is I can come in and give myself a good clean line where I need to. There we go. We got a little box and our little stuff. I would say this is a good stopping place. We're going to come back, put some highlights and definition on our bushes, and put in all of the drama lighting around the house. My bushes <laughs> mm -hmm. will be a little bit of my phthalo green and burnt sienna, but they'll be cad yellow in them. And it's, it is a brighter. Green, but it's not a completely bright and green. And we are going to play it against some darker greens as well. Now, as I come in front of the house, those will be some of my darkest greens. See what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Come back with some of those little dark greens. Here as well. Not everything. And sometimes it's just subtle. And a little bit like that. I'm going to switch into my number four round for a second. Get a nice light yellow going from that initial. You add some highlighted little leaves as you do. I'm 
maybe we can find some level of bush that's happening here just with a little highlight with that bush. Something delicate and subtle. delicate top because you'd have one you know but around the side of a house you might not because that would be a little bit in shadow I'm rinsing thoroughly I'm gonna do a couple fun things first I'm gonna get my black and I'm gonna thin it with water so it's nice and fluid because what I need next is a pretty nice fluid black I need to put out more black because I used up a lot of my black or my black dried or whatever happened, I'm going to do that. I like to come under this part of the roof. Maybe a little under there too. Let's give ourselves a little door. Place for somebody to come. And while I'm at it, sometimes I like it, you know, exaggerate my walkway away from the house. Fun trick. I'm going to give myself a bit of a window. Right, because people live in the house. They're happy to be here. They think that's great. <laughs> Some peoples. Some peoples, right? Yeah. Now, my roof, I'm going to take my cad red, and I will tone it a bit with my ultramarine, but much less. See that brightness there? Yeah. I'll go ahead and grab some of my yellow. And sometimes it's nice to tone it with a bit of the red. So it's like kind of a yellow orange. Come inside the window. And let's give it some light. I'm going to go ahead and grab a little of my Naples yellow mix. With my pad. And I'm going to touch some light out here. It's going to make sense in a second. You all leaned over there. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I was looking around you. I'm going to come right here on the top. that highlight on that roof, right? This all finishes with something kind of fun. And I'm going to use my bristle brush to get it. I do find it can help to turn everything on its side. I'm going to get a little of my yellow into the brush. It's okay if it picks up colors from the clouds or anything here and there a little white into it and I'm going to kind of create this sense of light coming down from oh wow little more white as I'm going. Yeah, 
you know, and in this case, a little bit less is more. You're trying to talk about we'll rinse out, and sometimes it's even nice to come back before the paint's dry with your damp brush because you can kind of blend that out. And the idea we're trying to do is to say that in this storm, right, in this tremendous storm, there's a little bit of light. Little, and I think it's important to tell those kinds of stories in our art. I'll just wipe our camera a bit down. So that there's that feeling of, I don't know, optimism and and like it's going to be okay, I can get home, and there it'll be. So I guess we could say it's optimistic little clouds. <laughs> 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 that being said, I'm going to grab uh, probably any little neutral color that I can. I will try to get enough white into it so it has contrast to show because I'll sign with that. I don't want to sign with a color that isn't used in my painting or that's too bright because I don't want to pull away from the composi composition. Mm -hmm. So it's there. I know, like, nowadays the, the temptation is to really sign and watermark and do those things. But I have to say... I like that. Is that not wild? Turned out great. Completely fanciful, Scott. That was a fantastic way to spend our time. I really love sharing every technique with you. I love the result of how this came out, the feeling that it makes in the heart, the fine color mixes. Just every aspect of creating this is just super rewarding. Now, if you'd like to come back tomorrow, we're going to be painting that gorgeous stone statue with chrysanthemums. She's gonna be a lot of fun. Everything here, you can do all or one. Either is fine. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.